So here I'm going to talk about how to write a macroeconomic report. I, that's kind of a key idea in my macroeconomic data analysis class. Um, I, I write about this extensively, but the idea is just to really think about what goes into an economic report, who's your audience, and uh, what kind of principles you want to do to sort of to put that report together. All right. So this idea, I'm going to kind of get at some general ideas before I talk about what makes a report versus an academic paper. Sometimes people are very good at that sense, but business reports can be very different uh, and in terms of audience as well as the layout. If, and, and then you have to think about an economic concept, the marginal concept. What is your contribution that adds a little bit to the, your reader's knowledge? Okay, I talk a little bit about lay, layout and a little bit about grammar as well. Now, uh, business reports are different than academic papers. Academic papers are written for experts who might know the math, know the ideas. You actually would be sort of insulting them to be too easy on them. Um, but they still follow a basic four-part structure with an introduction, a literature review possibly included, as well as methods, results, and then a conclusion. These are of different lengths depending on on the, the project. Um, have a you know they can be uh, you know 15 pages, sometimes 30. Sometimes people have so many robustness checks and stuff that it could be 50 pages or more. Um, but they're as long as they're good. There's no uh, set length. Um, there's a lot of math which you want to be typing up in LaTeX or other software. Um, and they kind of assume that the reader has that background. But the same sense, a lot of times economists especially just think that the math speaks for itself. They don't really edit it. You still have to have good English, good editing to get through the re review process. Now, business reports are often less technical. They, they can have different lengths of, or different parts of difficulty at different points as you go. The, you can have an executive summary that's really easy to understand at the first page, and then it gets into the body of it, and then it might have technical stuff in little boxes that are pullouts for those people who want that level of sophistication. Um, they're concise, they're laid out a little bit more artistically. Um, they, you know, pop for the eye because they're written, written as sort of a little publication. They're thoroughly edited both for content and for grammar, so they're really, you know, perfect grammar, but then they're also edit, read by different people. And in business, that could be the legal department, right? It could have anybody who's um, going to be uh, kind of watching out for who reads this. Okay, now if we talk about you know, who you're writing for, you have to think about who you are. So if you're an undergraduate, you write an undergraduate paper, you don't have to be a PhD, you can lay out your credentials as to, you know, what you, what you offer, all right? Um, if you have a PhD, you could talk about that as well. Um, but you should kind of know, you know, where your training, your background fits in. Now, who's your audience, right? You can think about, is it just the general reader, right? Are you publishing? Uh, it, could, it could be a professor. It could be uh, someone, you know, that's a, a customer of the business. But you could also be a client, right? It might be somebody who's the kind of wants, they're paying you, and you have to keep that in mind as what they want as well. All right, so everybody's got different goals. Now, background knowledge can differ by your audience, right? If it's a community development organization, people might not know as much economics. Um, and so you would just sort of bring in ideas at the level of someone who, who's not familiar with your field. Financial firm, they know a lot of economics. So again, if you talk about what a stock price is, then they say, well, we already know that. You have to, it's kind of a fine line you're walking, bringing in exactly the right amount of knowledge to your audience. You can bring in just enough for people, which means kind of knowing where they're coming from and what you can add. So I talk about that in terms of the economic marginal principle. You are giving the reader one additional unit of knowledge. You're starting with what they know. You can take one step further, but if you get too much, you're overloading them and they're not going to learn anything. So you need to know the starting point, you need to know how far to go, and you want to not overdo it. Right? And so some common mistakes people do are they use PhD level terms the audience has never heard of. That happens a lot in economics. There's a lot of jargon. But sometimes undergraduate students use terms they don't know about. Like they look something up and they just assume it's correct and then they don't understand it. So know if you have an undergrad what undergrads should know, right? If you're, if you're majoring in economics, you should know what you are, you know, what, what you should know at that level. Right? You don't have to be a PhD, so you should not use terms you don't know just because you see other people using them. All right, but on the other extreme, sometimes people explain common statistical tests. Like if you walk into a room of economists and you say what an average is, all right, or even things like stationarity, um, it depends if for time series people, but a, a, a microeconomist might not know what stationarity is. So again, that's a really hard thing to get at what people know. And I've seen people in papers over explain stuff, but then I've seen people under explain stuff. All right, so you should kind of really research exactly what is new for your reader. And sometimes people want to you know, fill space in a paper. They derive well-known mathematical formulas. You don't have to do that. You can refer to other papers as well. So, again, you can overdo it and give stuff that's too hard, or you can underdo it and do stuff that's too easy.
I talk about this in principles class, a lot of principles and micro classes. I talk about beer a lot. You know, college students tend to consume it. So, you know, if the price of beer goes up, yeah, do you drink more beer or less, right? That can sort of, you kind of insult people by saying, like, you know, all you do is drink beer. Here's a way to relate to you. Um, you know, always treat people with respect that, they, that they'll understand the concepts if you just treat it at, at a level. Um, one thing I always say is a lot of people have taken exactly one statistics class. You know, maybe remember it, maybe it was a while ago. So people do know a little bit. Always kind of come at people knowing that, that they'll pick it up if you come at with knowing that right starting point. Now, talking about layout, now we're putting the paper together. So we have our audience, and we're saying, well, who are we writing for? Now we're putting the project together. Always be concise. You don't have you know, to waste space. We're trying to be efficient with using, as, you know, getting the information across in as little space as possible. Um, people do not add the data sets. They don't put the, an Excel file. They don't print out a spreadsheet. They don't put the underlying data. They can put you, direct you toward a website, but they might summarize it with graphs and text and stuff, but the data are not part of the paper. Sometimes undergraduate students will staple all their data at the end. You usually don't have to do that. Um, a lot of professional papers will embed text and graphics. Um, in an academic paper, they might put all the tables at the end, but a professional paper will actually have the graphics right in the text. Always unless there's exceptions, but always use complete sentences. Um, you could have bullet points, even those are sentences, but you could have an executive summary that really gets the point across at the front. But a big point is that it must be easy to navigate, whoever your reader is. They should be able to know exactly where to turn and exactly what point you're getting across. And then I talk about house style in the publishing industry. Um, every place has their own way of doing things. Now, sometimes students ask, like, do I need APA or MLA? I don't really know what economics is. I've seen all sorts of different types of formats. So you can just do what works for you. But if you do get an academic publication or write for a boss, they have their own way. You will have to reformat it according to their way anyway. So write what's good for you and then change it for them when you have to. Now, to integrate text and graphics, I suggest embedding images into the text. Use this tight formatting if you go to format picture and word, and then you can actually put the image right into the words, um, or you can put it right below in a separate row. If you're writing for a class, you don't have to put the tables at the end, but academically, sometimes people do with working papers. And then once you do have an image, you're putting it in there, uh, you can change the borders and change different things so that it kind of looks nice in there, and I talk about that elsewhere as well. Right. But for right now, we're talking about some major points, which is knowing your, knowing your audience, writing at a certain level. That's a, that's a trick to learn. Right? Don't be too easy. Don't be too hard. But you want to contribute. You want to get your point across efficiently. And then once you put that paper together, lay it out so it looks nice. Right? And then finally, I didn't talk about it too much, but you want to, you want to have good grammar. Right? So when you have good grammar... Um, you can always, like, for example, I'm just sort of pulling this open. You can go in and you can do spell check. You can do all sorts of different things. But certain things you want to avoid, right? Um, when you use grammar, you want to make sure that you're not writing in a way that's over people's head. People use jargon. Um, you want to make sure that's thoroughly edited, thoroughly spell checked. And then one thing I point out is, is like, don't use sports analogies. Sometimes people use Greek mythology analogies. Make sure that you're writing knowing where people are coming from. So. Once you have it laid out, you edit it, proofread it, have somebody else proofread it, because you want to have the most polished paper, um, whoever your audience is, maybe it's a journal editor, maybe it's your professor, and that's really going to sell your paper for whoever's reading it.